What's up guys? Welcome to AC Designs Garage and on today's episode we are going to be removing all this surface rust off of patches of my 1965 C10's front fender. We're going to clean it all up and get ready for next week to where we're going to fix that down there. That big old hole, I'm going to show you how to make a patch panel and all that. Make sure you like, subscribe and all that good stuff so you can stay tuned but we're going to fix that next week. But first we've got to prep this whole panel right here and uh, get her ready to start doing a little arcing and sparking on. So we're going to take her outside. It's a gorgeous 75 degrees here in North Carolina in the middle of March. And uh, let's get at it. All right, since this is nice and the birds are squawking and making all kind of noise, and I got all kind of sun around here, we're going to go around here to the lift area in the shade so y'all can see what I'm doing. That sunshine is bright, but I am thankful for it. Now here's the rest of the truck. This is the 65. We've got a 72, a 68. I got truck problems. But what we're going to have to do, and this will be another video, probably after I do the uh, patch video next week, we're going to have to faux tina. And a lot of people's like, oh no, doing fake patina. But, I mean, this is the real deal, people. We're This truck's going to stay like this. This is real deal patina on this truck. And I'm wanting to match it. And somebody had sanded, I don't know why, but sanded the whole fender down. I guess I was getting ready to redo it. But we're going to take a lot of pictures of this here's a spot we need to fix a lot of pictures of this and i'm gonna show you guys how to make it replicate to match it and we're not trying to make the truck look like fake patina because uh, it's real real deal i just want it to tie in and not look like we've done anything to it but i don't want big holes in the bottom of it so let's go grab that fender set it up out here and uh we'll show you the tools we're going to use they don't cost a lot of money they're cheap and all you guys can afford it sandblasting is the ultimate way to do this but it's expensive. Not every blaster can do a good job at it. Now we got one around here that does a really good job and don't warp the panel all up, but sandblast is ultimate, but we're not gonna be able to do this. We're gonna do this, I think. If you already got a Dewalt side grinder, that little disc I don't think's four or five bucks. So probably for ten dollars we're gonna strip this fender down to shiny new metal and be ready to go. And then we'll come back and do a little faux teener in a couple weeks on it. So a little spring clean. And I haven't been showing you guys my arc droid setup i'm doing here because i don't really know what i'm doing so i'm not going to film it but just trying to get this little unit done where we can start cutting our little our own cnc brackets but yeah, as you can see here i may leave yeah probably up to about right here here down is going to be replaced next week but down to here still got the good patina i want something to match to but you can see where they came here and just dead ground it off so we're going to try to clean up all this up to this lip here and if it has decent patina like up here, I'm going to leave it. We're just going to feather it into it, but I'm just going to grind this area here because I want stuff to halfway match. We've done some. I don't know if you can tell here. This truck's already had cab corners put in it, full cab corners, full rockers, brand new rockers underneath it. And all this is fake patina right here. All that's real. And this is real, but we try to just blend that in. That's all fake patina. I put a lot of effort in trying to the match the textures and that's where you can do a good job like all these little blots and look see what colors underneath but we'll explain that in a couple weeks when we do that faux teener on it but let's get it right here and get it on the saw but so this is the old uh, paint style stand that me and daddy made a long time ago i'm about to figure out a way to do this we just made them out of conduit and bent them up i might have to figure out how to clamp this to it so she don't go falling off when we're stripping it so go grab something to do that with before i knock it off i don't need any extra patina on it all right i think this is going to hold it i got it hooked up under the rail there a little bungee cording that should be pretty good right there so should be secure let me show you real quick what we're using none of this stuff costs a lot of money the mains really bird i'm working here main star of the show is going to be these they different name brands the main star of the show is going to be these uh paint stripping discs these things work great great for stripping paint they don't take material off that's the thing we don't want we don't want to come in here with a grinder unless that that may be some heavy areas we'll have to come in here with scotch bright on a little roll lock with an air tool and clean up but mainly we're going to try to use this this builds up a little heat not a whole lot i'll link all this stuff in the description box below for you guys to find, I got a Amazon affiliate link. We'll link all this in. It don't cost you guys any extras. I make just a little smidgen off of qualified purchases. Like I said, it don't cost you guys any extra. It just puts it in a place for you guys to be able to scoop it up and not search the whole interweb. I love these grinding shields. You're going to want a grinding shield, respirator, or some kind of dust mask, earplugs, gloves. And uh, I like these Dewalt grinders here. 
but definitely gloves because these things here will strip your knuckles just as fast and i know don't have a guard you just gotta work careful with them but some of the stuff i do i just i can't use a guard i do like leaving these on and i know where my hand's at in that but just be careful don't take the guard off if you don't feel comfortable because it'll get your knuckles but what i'm gonna do to start with this is what they look like after using them for a while they round off like that and the only thing you really got to be careful with is like edges like really sharp edges like this here it'll make them go up in dust pretty quick and i think these things i can't remember I, like i said i'll link them below you'll see they're like 25 30 bucks or something for a pack of four and if you don't get crazy and hit them edges like i was talking about you're good to go i love these benchmark abrasive grinding shields they have enough room for your respirator in there and earmuffs too if you're wearing them but I like my regular old earplugs so we're gonna knock this old flapper wheel off right here and uh put one of these used ones just burn up our used ones and if we have to we'll go to that one so let's get that set up real quick Oh, you're wondering where you can pick up one of these rad AC Designs Garage t-shirts? Where else? The only place in the world you can get them is www.acdesignsgarage.com. All right, guys, make sure your uh, grinder's not plugged in because this is end bad. But on these d walks they got a little button that pushes it, locks it. And as long as you don't hog these things on, you must have hogged this one on. There we go. You just spin that unit off like that. Sits right on that edge. And we'll do this one the same way. I used to put them on by hand. You just push that button back in after you get it run down. That's good enough. Like I said, keep these on. I see a lot of people take these off when they take the guards. If you'll keep this, usually this is your hand that ends up getting into it. But I wear gloves anyway. But as long as you keep your hand here and you know where your knuckles are, you're not going to have any problems with it. I hadn't anyways. So let's get all suited up with everything, earplugs, mask, and uh, see what this thing will do. All right, don't mind my gorgeous hair here. I put my respirator, I should have brought my paint respirator, but I found some of these. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on, put earplugs in, cause you ain't probably gonna be able to hear me. I don't like these things, but I don't like to suck in dust either, or rust, even worse. Grab my cord. We're going to work small sections at a time and just keep moving around because you don't want to just keep working it because it will get hot and you can cause warpage if you don't watch, but... I'm just going to basically let the weight of the grinder just work this around a little bit. you got to plug stuff in to get it to work. guys look at that i mean that's a matter of uh it's a little warm i'd say she's probably around 90 degrees or so so you want to come back because uh well i'll tell you what we got one of them shooter things let me shoot real quick and see what it is all right let me see if i can figure this thing out Don't tell me this stupid thing is oh okay never mind don't want to okay that's 70 
There's 85. It's cooled off of here. I would say it's around 90 degrees. Let's see what regular temperature is. About 75 degrees. Uh, I think I'm going to keep this thing in my back pocket. And as I'm... Where that's the hotter part there. That's about 92. So I'm going to keep this in my back pocket. I'll even link one of these. And uh, that way I can keep a check on it as I'm doing it. Because you don't want it to get over 100 and some degree. 110 degrees or so. That's where you start running into warpy issues. But, I mean, that was like a couple minutes of work, guys. And you can see it's... It looks really good. Like I said, I'm gonna we'll come over here a little bit more and then just kind of blend it over into here. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, probably red oxide primer because that's what they really used a lot back in the 60s and stuff. So let's uh, get suited back up and back at it. Let's see what the temperature's doing. 82, 85. We get up here at their bend. Sometimes the bends. About 95, 98. Something like that. So we're keeping her good. Good. About what a fair. About 98. Keep her around here. It don't take a whole lot. Now right in here, I'm not going to strip a whole lot here. I'm going to come in this area about where I'm going to do my cutting and welding. Because this stuff here is just garb. I may do this so when we're making our pattern, but this rough, rough stuff like this, it will chew that mess up. Now, as for, uh, I don't know if I get to it next week or not. Like I said, we're going to make this whole panel from scratch. We're going to have the radius to it and everything. We're going to fix it. Uh, this back piece, depends how far we get. The brace on the bottom's got some holes you can see right there in it. We're going to patch it. All right, back to stripping. <laughs> see through here it's a little little thin up in here we'll see what it does when we get to grinding but i usually like to come two or three inches above we may come up to here this radius here is awful nice down in here and anytime you can uh get away without having to make too much radius we may come here and go up and cut right here and just grind on this edge and make this piece here and uh we we'll to do a little bit a little bit down here Got the crusty rusty here.
Right, guys next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just run it with some 80 grit on the da to clean it up you don't have to but i want to go ahead and get this uh good and smoothed off and this will actually help feather these edges back real nice so let's get into that real quick and like i said i'll link all these like the da's and the pads and all that stuff in here too and uh this thing will be about ready for start patching away Basically what we're trying to go for is the feather. You can see each layer of paint here, the blue, the white, and then another white, and the primer layer looks like in between it. We're just trying to just give a nice long feathered out edge to it. And uh, that way when we paint, you ain't gonna see this edge. We, we're not trying to get 99% of this rust out. You'd probably want to do some kind of light sandblasting on this if this was a nice vendor. But it's, it's pretty bad shape. And uh, we're keeping the truck patinaed anyway, so. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to finish up this sand real quick, get these edges feathered out right here, and call this a video. care about this down here because we're cutting this out here so Got to blow it off and get out here in the good old sunshine so you can really see what we've done. Man, it feels good. It's got a good smooth feel to it. Like I said, if you was going to paint this slick paint, I'd be worried about this. If you don't have 90, 99% of the rust or 100% of the rust out, it could come back and bubble later. But this truck, I mean, 
who cares? I don't care. We'll get this all, we'll wipe this all down good before we start our patina. And uh, next week, look forward to making a patch. If y'all wanna learn how to make a patch from scratch, granted they do make this patch and it's very cheap and it would take me half the time to do it. But for some of you guys, some vehicles they still haven't made a good stamped out patches for yet. And you need to learn the ability of how to map it out and uh, make your patterns and uh, get your radiuses and all that. And I'm gonna show you all that next week on here. We're gonna whack and stack some dimes on her and grind her down. Have a new fender and uh, get ready to ultimately what you'd want to put on this here before we start our patina probably not just because of what it is and i mean this fender's truly pretty rough but we're probably going to do red oxide primer epoxy primer will be the best to put on here because it's going to bite or maybe an etch prime or something like that so we'll figure it out you'll be able to see on the patina video when we start doing that matching and patina and all that good stuff so that's gonna be a fun video there's a lot of neat tricks and tips i'm gonna show you instead of just i mean it ain't just like you can just spray red blue green whatever on top and sand through but that's only a part of it it takes a lot of different tools to be able to pull this texture off to really pull it off some but let's get right here and look at it all right guys i'll try not to blind you too bad but you can see how how nice and clean it came out still needs a a little bit of washing on it, but turned out pretty good to be a daggone fender that somebody ground down and left outside 10 years ago, probably. Like I said, the underside is going to need a little bit of work. That's why I said I'm not spending too much time on this. We may take this bracket off and paint it when we go to do it, but we're going to do the two-tone blue and white on it just like it is. I need to find me something that's close to Carolina blue and some off-white so we can... Get this thing put together and get this pick em up truck on the road. All right, guys, hope y'all enjoyed that quick little video on how to strip surface rust and uh, maybe a little DA action on the paint, figure out how to do that. Because this right here is the patina we're going to have to go through on the fender to get everything to match because it butts right up to the truck. So, hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. All the links to everything we used in here is in the description below. And remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We go.